Hey guys, in this video I'll be making an Aaliyah shirt. Would you say to have your way? Would you give up or try again? If I hesitate to let you win. I got my photos off of Google, but you can get yours any way you know how. Would you turn away or play me off? Or would you stay? So once you have all the photos you want to use, open up Canva in your browser and upload your photos there. Okay, now you want to add your photos one at a time to the canvas. Go to effects and click on background remover so that way you can remove the um, extra part of the picture. Once you arrange the photos on the canvas how you like, you want to go to download, um, download it as a PNG, and then make sure it has a transparent background. As a side note, you must have Canva Pro to use the background remover and transparent background features. Next, find a font you want to use on thefonts.com and download them. I downloaded two, but you can download more or less. Um, they will download as a zip file, so you will need to extract them before you can use them. After you extract your um, fonts, go back to Canva, click on the brand kit section, scroll down to the bottom and click on upload font. So you want to go to upload your fonts, you can do up to 20 at a time. Um, make sure you click on upload anyways. Next, type out the words you want to be on your shirt. I want my shirt to say one in a million because that's my favorite album and it was just released onto streaming platforms this past week. Now you want to go ahead and change the font style from the standard one to the one that you uploaded. I downloaded two fonts so what I'm going to do is type out one in a million two times and then I'm going to go ahead and compare the two fonts to the original album cover and see which one matches better to me. Here we have the original album cover. Um, so as you can see, I go back and look and see which one that I like better and I ended up choosing this one. Now that you've chosen your font, you want to go ahead and download it as a PNG with a transparent background, same as before. Now we're going to open up Cricut Design Space. I had to wait for mine to update, I haven't used it in a while. Now you want to upload your pictures one at a time so you can either drag it like I'm doing or you can go through the whole usual steps. Make sure you click simple and then click um, cut image for the words and then for the pictures you want to do print and cut but I ended up not using this method because I wanted my picture to be bigger and take up more space. Next, go ahead and create a new project and then go ahead and upload your images to the blank canvas. Here I'm using Design Space's slice feature to separate the two elements of the photo. To me that's faster than downloading and uploading a picture twice. For the shirt I'm using a 100% heavy cotton shirt by Gildan and here you just see me measuring how big I want the words to be on the shirt. In the clip you see me change the width to 12 but I ended up changing it choose 10 because 12 was too large Ooh, you want, me, you want, me, you 
here I align the elements in the way I want them to appear on the actual shirt itself. The words are going to be white, which is the color of the vinyl I'll be using, which you'll see in the next clip. Normally I do not use Cricut brand HTV for shirts, but I could not find either of my other two brands, so here we are. I'll be using the Pin Gear brand fabric transfers from Walmart. Make sure if you're using a colored shirt that you get the dark fabric transfers and only use this with a inkjet printer. Make sure to only add one sheet in at a time. print quality from normal to best and change your paper type to a matte one. So I ended up having to print three times before I got the quality that I was looking for. Um, as you can see with this one, it's definitely not as nice as the one on the right. After you're done printing, go back to design space, click the make it button and make sure to mirror both mats. You can play around with the position of the words on the map before you send it to get cut. Click on the appropriate material type and then send your project to the machine and let it work. Next you want to read your design. Make sure to go slow so you don't rip it or accidentally take any portion of the design off. I'm using a Cricut Easy Press 2, but you can also use an iron on the highest setting. The recommended time and temperature for Cricut HTV is 315 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 seconds. While you wait for your heat press to warm up, make sure to lint roll your shirt so that way you can avoid bumps in your design. Fold your shirt down the middle and iron a light crease into it so that way it's easier for you to line up your design. Fold your carrier sheet down the middle as well so that way you can align both the middles of the shirt and the carrier sheet. Now go ahead and press your HTV first. Make sure you remove the picture and then make sure you do it on the back as well so that way it actually like sticks. It is a cold peel and for the picture you will be using an iron. This is going to be a cool peel as well and make sure that you don't um, over iron like I did and I actually kind of messed up my transfer a little bit. So at the last minute I decided to put this cut out on a face mask since in LA we are still required to wear face masks inside stores. Before I reveal the final results it would mean so much to me if you subscribe to my channel and follow my business page on IG and Facebook okay here are the final results let me know if you like it and leave a comment down below and thank you for watching Baby girl, talk to you. Come on, come on.